representative of Switzerland to the UN and other organizations, uh, other international organizations in Geneva to wrap up. And please know that this session is streamed and will be recorded for further use. Ambassador, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, when you looked at the program, you probably had the same problem as I had. Um, you saw that at the end of these incredibly stimulating days, a diplomat will make the conclusive the conclusion uh, or the conclusive remarks. Now, I felt that most of the times diplomats do not say anything tangible and concluding remarks would just be a repetition of what you have already heard. So the good news when you look at the program is that it was foreseen to have a coffee break before this session. And coffee breaks are a very good opportunity to escape if you don't want to uh, attend a session that is not really to your liking. The bad news is that I have been to too many conferences and I have used this device to escape. So I asked Johan, who very kindly agreed, that I may speak before uh, the coffee break. But, but I propose a deal. Because you have to stay in the room, I'm not going to make any conclusive remarks. Because I have an additional challenge. I wasn't here for most of the session. So I'm not going to tell you anything about what you have witnessed here if I haven't been here. And what I'd ra much rather would like to do is that you tell me the conclusive uh, conclusion. What is it that you take away from these two days? What is it you learned? What was new to you? And what could we take as something to be, you know, reflected upon or perhaps to be worked on? What is it that really made a difference? And what I'd like you to do is that each one of you, or those who wish, would come up with just one takeaway. And I will start, and I will take the last point that was mentioned by Dayan. And it's not because I have a short memory span, but because I do think that Dayan touched on something absolutely essential. You mentioned mediators, the importance of mediators. You could also call them interpreters, people who, are, who live between the different worlds. And one thing that I realized during the day I was here, is how important it is that we have more people who know at least the, both the worlds that most of us come from, the tech world or the world of policy. I come from the work of policy. Frankly, most of the jargon or the words that you used, certainly all the acronyms, I didn't understand them. I don't know what the issues are, hypes and trends. What exactly is that? And I do not know the challenges for us, the challenges for governance, for society, and the challenges for human, humanity. We need people who know what is happening in the technical world and who are looking for a dialogue with those from the other side to then try to identify the issues we have to work on uh, commonly. Like the issue, for example, we touched on this morning on artificial intelligence. Is there a need for regulation? That can only be resolved in dialogue. That is the one takeaway for me. Who will start with their takeaways? You. Thanks. My takeaway is that Diplomacy is relational, and it's an aspect that we forget. And I say this not only in terms of diplomacy as a discipline, an institution of uh, relations between states, but diplomacy can be also viewed as an academic field. International relations has always been very static in analyzing international affairs, and it forgets that key aspect of diplomacy, which is relational. And we saw that in the discussion on artificial intelligence, and we saw that in many different ways, that the human element, the emotional, all of those aspects that we keep on mentioning, it's an aspect of relations. 
And it is that aspect that is still very relevant and especially will be relevant for the coming years as technology uh, becomes ever more pervasive. Diplomats and diplomacy will have a key role to play because of they are the institution that keeps the glue of peace together. And that aspect of relation is what contributes to that peace. And it is diplomats who are the tailors of it. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Actually, a very similar comment, but I'll, I'll put it differently. Uh, my takeaway was that we clearly have challenges arising from digitalization and globalization with respect to what is the role of the state and the role of the governments with respect to their own citizens and with respect to other states and other governments. And how can Diplo help to address exactly the issues that you mentioned? And then how could Geneva and Switzerland also help in that context? Because clearly we need new ways to tackle some of these issues because the old ways don't seem to be working very well. Thank you very much. Yes, please, Mike. I was struck by the fact that a lot of the conversations I had were very similar to ones I've had at internet governance forums, meetings, and other internet governance meetings. But I did want to share something that I think I can summarize as a 280 character tweet. And that is, I heard lots of hints of really exciting opportunities that the technology could help us achieve in the area of diplomacy and geopolitics. We talked at lunch about Westphalia 2.0. We've talked about not using robot negotiators, but using big data and machine learning to inform negotiators and build trust. We talked a little bit about the ways in which we could use social media and big data to build community and understanding what our societies believe and think and maybe even changing their opinions. But we don't have a clue on how to do any of that. I think my takeaway is that looking at these two words, continuity and change, it's pretty clear that it's the elements of continuity which are the most dominant. But somehow we get seduced by the jargon of the day, uh, technology, artificial intelligence, etc. I think it's our Macedonian colleague who put his finger on it when he said, it's about relations. Building relationships is really at the core of diplomacy. And building relationships in turn hinges on credibility and trust. And that has very little to do with all the frills that seem to seduce so many of my friends at Diplo and elsewhere. Uh, maybe this is an old fogey who is talking about the past. But I think it's still relations between countries are still about building trust, building bridges, building understanding, and it all hinges on credibility. And the mechanics of that process, the so-called diplomats, their task remains one of continuity of actions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'll pick up on the theme of continuity, and we've had two, three speakers already enforce that, and I totally agree with it. But I'd like to look at the theme of change, because Jovan has always had a particular gift, and that is to have his finger on the pulse of change, and to be able to incorporate that into the continuity of training here in Diplo, and the continuity of vision that you have of how to make trends relevant to the reinforcement of diplomatic relations. Now you speak about trust 
and we do have to learn to trust each other, and that's always going to be a relational issue, but we also need to learn to trust ourselves and our own skills and abilities, and Diplo comes into that a lot with its training, and therefore I'd like to, the takeaway for me is how Diplo is even now, as a result of this morning session, which you were privy to as well, thinking about new trends such as artificial intelligence and how they may be brought into the service of enhancing our own skills in order to trust ourselves to learn to deal with others better. And I think that's a great thing for Diplo to be doing and to continue doing because that's what it has always been at the cutting edge of. Well, thank you very much. You have taken my last words, um, but we will come back to it. And Patrick. Thank you. Uh, very short. Uh, very, it's a very practical um, uh, thing we discussed. Among other things, we don't have to forget, we are now, we, we've, we've been talking about uh, digital questions. This is the digital era. And um, we as uh, administrations and working in diplomacy, we don't have to forget that one very fundamental aspect is that we have lost uh, the um, uh, the habit of, uh, of, of, uh, of a classical use of archives. Um, and in looking back, we, we, must, uh, we, we, we might have a problem, let's say in 10 or 20 years, that since uh, digital and numerical uh, uh, devices have been introduced in our daily lives, uh, we, have, we, don't, we don't have any uh, archive of what, uh, any, any trace of what was um, um, communicated by, by email. So we have to find a way um, um, acceptable to all and, and uh, uh, used by all uh, to, um, to, to, to uh, I don't know how you say in English, archive, uh, to archive um, what we have, what we have uh, uh, communicated and, and, and sent each other by email during 20, 30, 40 years. Otherwise, we'll have a, a, like a black hole uh, in terms of uh, institutional memory uh, everywhere. So it's a very practical uh, conclusion. But it's, we, ha we, have to have, we have to learn the skills to do this, to master this problem, this question. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is certainly an interesting a uh, question, what you call a black hole, may uh, in fact be a positive thing, because in times of disruption, you may not need to have archives, because you don't need continuity. So there is a whole discussion in this, whether we still need archives in the future, because in the past we needed them to have continuity in what we were doing, especially as an administration. But in the future, if things are changing very rapidly, perhaps we have no longer any use for archives. At least it may be worth the discussion. Who has the microphone? Please. Um, my takeaway is a bit of a different microphone. nature. I think it's not working. Uh, closer. Closer. Close enough? OK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, my, my takeaway is of a different nature. I thought that we had more questions than we had answers. That was the most obvious thing which struck me in our discussions. Um, at the back of that, I saw uh, <clears throat> at least that those who are more closely related to the diplomatic world, quite a clear awareness of technology, what it means, and, uh, and how it might affect diplomacy, though the questions were always there. But I also sensed an under, undercurrent of discomfort and, and, and concern. Um, there is optimism at those who know the technology because they are professionals in it. But I think at the diplomatic uh, system, we are lost how much is going to affect our life. We sense it's, it's, it's touching our life in many obvious ways, but in the more fundamental ways it's going to touch our lives, I think we are a bit lost and a bit worried. That's my takeaway. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think my takeaway is that uh, with Diplo having now 15 years, uh, I've seen how it has come a really long way with the acceleration de l'histoire, 
uh, we have here uh, actually today take we can take stocks stock of these achievements and uh, I think for me personally um, I see how different communities here come together I mean again policy community technical training community academic community and I think we all have the same understanding uh, when it comes to vulnerabilities we have vulnerabilities uh, with regard to our digital individual vulnerabilities the vulnerabilities of states and the international community in regards of these technological developments so I think the takeaway really is that Diplo has to help us to understand what's going on in this rapid world uh, there may be codes maybe black holes but I think it's it's important that there's a reference organization which is bringing the communities together and will help us to be a platform of exchange for all these people here together. Thank you. Thank you. There was someone behind there, close to the door. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I have two key takeaways. One of them is about the format of discussions. And it seems to me that in a scenario in which we have more questions than answers, and I think the ambassador is completely correct, we need to sit people around the table, people with different areas of knowledge and expertise, and we are very fortunate to have people coming from different walks of life, and also people from different generations. I think that this is key for us to move towards the answers that we need to find. And the second point is that I think Diplo is quite unique in asking the big questions, the geopolitical ones, the economic ones, but also not to lose perspective of the very zoomed in questions about human beings. And I've never been to an event in which we are discussing artificial intelligence, the big picture, but also how technology is affecting the life uh, of workers that are working from home or how, how it's affecting people's rights to disconnect. So this zoomed out and zoomed in perspective and the humanity that I feel in our discussions to me, it's very unique. Thank you. The microphone travels around the room. Uh, I thought that this was a very interesting conference as one which brought together people who were able to talk about the involvement in diplomacy, if we look at that future of, of people anywhere in the world, not just in foreign ministries, not just in governments, but people anywhere in the world, and the way they are mixed into diplomatic effort by the way the internet works, and the way social media and other things contribute to the way communication takes place. And if you think of yourself, sir, in the Swiss foreign ministry, once upon a time, the ministry was in Bern and the embassies were scattered around the world and they worked to your instructions. It's very different now. In many respects, the embassies are extensions of the ministry rather than just representatives of it. And in the same way, with a lot of organizations, you, you, they are dotted around the world as entities in their own right. Uh, responsible to a home. What we now have to learn, and the conference brought that to me quite well, is that there is a wider understanding of the importance of discipline as you handle material within an entity like the Swiss Foreign Ministry or mine, the Australian. That discipline was once enforced by the normal working methods, but it's not the same anymore. And so I very much agree with what Patrick said about archives and the importance thereof. And one day we will drink some beer and talk about archives because Unless you have a record of what history taught you, you will commit the same mistakes again and again. And this conference has done a lot to put a toe into that water and take us somewhere. Thank you, Jovan, for doing it. Thank you very much. Someone else? Yep. I only want to talk about a personal takeaway, a very personal takeaway, so no big, no grand design in what I'm going to say, but it's very important. I, I, I would take away with me the same sensation that I've been having in the last 20 years participating to deep low activities, especially in Malta now, back, but not, not only in Malta, which is, first of all, um, I'm not alone, I'm not a freak. You know, there are many other people reflecting on this, bright minds, a lot of ideas, and I can share it with somebody younger, older, same age, now becoming older, but anyway, same age, let's put it this way. So, and this gives me a lot of, you know, energy going back, because sometimes you feel, you know, I'm, I'm the wrong, I'm, I'm thinking the wrong things or seeing the wrong things. And, and every time during these 20 years, I, I, I had this, uh, this uh, very, very big impression. And, and I think this is, this is important. The second thing is that um, 
again on, on Diplo and of course on Jovan, but all the staff, because this is a group, it's a team, it has always been a team. Um, I know that I will, I will, you know, there are, there will always be new issues, new challenges, but so, at least for my professional work, uh, which is a big part of my life. Uh, and there will be also somebody who will be reflecting on this with me, and I will also be able, sometimes we agree, sometimes we disagree, it doesn't matter, but there will be new challenges, and, 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 and I know that I will have, a, you know, a help in this, uh, and, and this is essential for our work, because as it was proved, uh, our work keep changing all the time. If we don't change with the work, we get old, not physically, but really in, in, in the efficiency and effectiveness of our, of our activity. So, thank God Diplo is there and it's going to be there for, for some time. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more speaker, the lady up there. Yes, my takeaway is that how this very interesting conference was perfectly organized by all uh, this fantastic Diplo team. So, and also the chance that Jovan has given to all of us to meet and to discuss all these different topics. Thank you, Diplo. One more, but you are the last. Please, here, in front. And don't, don't, please, don't thank Jovan, because he, there has to be something left for me. Okay. Also. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to thank Jovan, but I need to see where he is. Okay, Jovan. So my takeaway is, happy birthday, Diplo. As you turn a new page, you prove that you're, you may be adolescent in age, but in ideas, you're wise and sage. Keep on turning and waging, no, keep on turning new information campaigns and wage. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think the last intervention has sh shown it. One of the takeaways, and I, I'm sure I speak in the name of everybody, is perhaps rather a feeling. A feeling first of gratitude, but also a confirmation of something we knew before this conference. We knew that Diplo is doing fantastic work, and we, it has been confirmed during uh, these two days. I just assisted in one day, but this has certainly been one of the mo most inspiring, liveliest, and also mo most thought-provoking uh, con conferences that I have participated in the, last, uh, uh, in the last year. And I think that is due to Jovan and his team. We should never forget the whole team that is behind Diplo, but it is um, con uh, attributed, we can attribute it to this unique um, mixture that you all have, which is a mixture between savviness and humanity. Because it's not only about, as Biljana has indicated, about feeling trends and seeing what is what will be coming in the future, but it's also about organizing a conference that is more like a family gathering uh, than it is of a technical nature. And it's all the more so uh, uh, interesting because we have become a family here. Most of us didn't know each other beforehand. So this is a unique gift, and we all hope that Diplo will have another 15 years and that you will be able to develop all your skills and that we will be able to benefit from you. A big thank you very much to all of you, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And now, please pay attention, because this is not the end. And what we will show you now is so cool that it, that it could never be created by artificial intelligence. Uh, as you know, we have a team in Belgrade. It's actually the biggest team at Diplo. And we sometimes refer to them as the creative lab. Their job is to be creative with uh, having a visionary leader like Jovan. Uh, the problem is we are uh, quite overloading them with the creative ideas. Uh, but still, they find time for some fun, and we would like to show you something. Over to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh.
Belgrade, uh, I'm missing from this great rap. Wow, thank you. Uh, j- just, just, just la- last comment before uh, coffee break. Uh, one of the major takeaway, and I hope I manage to pass this message very often. Uh, Diplo is associated with me. I'm trying my best to do what I can, but Diplo, and it's not just a trivial world; it's really team work. And. Uh, one of the main aim of this conference was to show all of these people in the, their best from the last video participating in the sessions and I would like now to give them a one, one big thank first we call it our Malta tent and I will ask them to show their hands uh, we start with the Patrick quiet brain behind the conference Patrick Bravo. You're, you're coming. Uh, well, Diplo team on the stage. Yes. Everybody. Uh, while you're walking, Tanya. Tanya. Tanya made sure that you didn't fly from, let's say, Geneva uh, to Malta via, via Moscow or Washington. And thank you, Tanya, for uh, doing all of it. Bravo, Tanya. Yelena, last minute's uh, call on the web design. Yelena is our web designer. Bravo, Yelena. (laughs) 
sorry na and i will now reveal one of the biggest secret whenever we got excited about artificial intelligence sorina tells us calm down calm down it's not going to be that far bravo sorina among many other things that sorina is doing robert is robert our accountant the most important person you know who is a, okay okay uh, bravo robert and thank you Lino, uh, who makes sure that our uh, system functions. Uh, Lino, thank you. Now we have a bigger Belgrade team. Move a bit faster. Otherwise, we'll wait for coffee. Milica, Milica, who inspires the creative team. <laughs> Milica is a tough manager of the office with a smile. And whenever, whenever I, uh, I have uh, dilemmas, uh, I call Belgrade. I said, "Is Milica tough?" She said, "She's uh, so tough, but also so gentle and with a human touch." Thank you, Milica. Bravo. <laughs> we miss Mishko today. He stayed in Belgrade. Uh, we uh, have uh, uh, well. Where is Vlada? This famous rapper. Vlada, yes, is coming. <laughs> Vlada, you will be showing this rap to your... Uh, Vlada, Vlada has two, two uh, beautiful young, uh, well, one-year-old babies, and you're rapping during the late hours in the night. Thank you, Vlada. Uh, Nikola, our chief information officer. Nikola, please. Nikola, together with Lino, makes sure that our system functions, that our LMS is online, and uh, they sometimes have to do all of these attacks, troubleshooting, and uh, thank you, Nikola. Uh, Daria, 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 Daria. Hey, hello. <laughs> Daria, uh, what's happened? Daria joined Diplo as a web designer and in one dialogue uh, I realized that she has MA in digital arts. Therefore, Daria is curator of the art at the IGF which will be shown at the Palais in Geneva during the IGF. Thank you, Daria, for that. Okay. Bane, 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 Bane. Where is Bane? Bane disappeared. Okay, I can understand. Is this Bane outside? Okay. Send regards to Bane, he is, Bane is our software developer. Andre, 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 hey. <laughs> Andre uh, leads the, uh, together with Hannah, our educational program, speaks Chinese like, like quite a few people in our team. Biljana, Kishan, Andre, we can introduce Chinese of his official language. Thank you. Good. Dragana, another uh, sinologist, she's, uh, She's, she stayed in Belgrade, she's helping Andrei. Rade, 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 bravo. Rade is helping Andrei and Dragana. Uh, Mina, 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 bravo Mina. Yeah. Now, when you see the publication and the unique Diplos publication, Mina coordinates our publishing activities and uh, she manages to, to do it without being persona non grata for the next few people who will come on the stage. First is Neja. Neja? Yeah. <laughs> Neja is designer and uh, he, is, uh, he is the one of persons who have uh, these uh, calls at uh, midnight because we have to publish sometimes tomorrow morning. Except don't touch his Saturday. He is on Saturday on the river. He has a small uh, well house on the river, and he's what boat house. He is uh, floating on Saturdays. Therefore, don't touch his uh, Saturdays. Good. Uh, next is Victor. Victor, hey. Victor is the Diplos graphical designer and uh, he was working part-time with us. He will join us soon full-time. We are getting you from Sachi and Sachi, eh? Thank you. Good. <laughs> Vlada Veljašević. Vlada, yeah. Ah. Vlada is what he doesn't want to be. He is the vice dean of the Faculty of Fine Arts in Belgrade 
and professor who is teaching uh, students how to do illustrations, and he's behind our comics, illustrations, and, uh, and other artistic developments. And then we have Arvin. Arvin, hey, Arvin. This was a great video. <laughs> Arvin, in charge of video production, it was great. This video was really fantastic. Thank you, Arvin. Uh, Jelena? Jelena, Jelena is making photos. Come, come. <laughs> Jelena is photographer, uh, editor. Uh, how many tasks are different? Uh, three or four, which is typical for quite a few people. The stage is getting, uh, yeah, it's getting smaller. smaller. Good. Now we move to uh, our Geneva team. Roxana. Yeah. Okay, Roxana, uh, for those of you in Geneva, she's managing our IG project. She got recently award for having the, the best PhD in Switzerland in political science. And we are very proud to have you. Barbara? Hey, Barbara is uh, uh, another star from our Geneva office managing data projects, uh, what else, Ar Barbara? Artificial intelligence and uh, so, so many things. Bravo, Barbara. A. A. A is coming. A is uh, our illustrator uh, in charge of uh, tableau illustrations. And when you don't know answer in Diplo's office, you ask A. And uh, A in the very, her very shy and modest way always find the solution even the most complex technical solution. Thank you, A. Marco, 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 please. Marco is a, is a former student of HAD, then intern, and then now, uh, now a person working with us uh, full time, managing uh, when uh, Roxana, Barbara, and A cannot uh, 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 hold so many balls in the air. Then, then Marco starting, starting taking them over in very professional and substantive way. Thank, thank you, Marco, for all of you. We have our online team with Ginger in Wisconsin, who couldn't join us, with Katarina in Wales. Join us, Kat, please. Katarina is in charge of educational diplomacy, data diplomacy, digital diplomacy. You probably noticed that our colleagues were involved in different sessions and, uh, and they're really, really uh, people of, of many, many interesting skills and knowledge. And Kat is uh, covering quite a few areas, trying to develop our journal and our uh, publishing activities. Thank you, Kat. Uh, Marilia is in Strasbourg and today with us here. Marilia. Marilia, in di uh, teaching digital commerce, internet governance, cyber security, how to use Wikipedia. Anything missing, Marilia? No, we are adding, adding, adding. Thank you. Great. And uh, uh, Sita. Sita is based in Jakarta, and now she's here with us. Bravo. Sita is developing our uh, Euro, uh, uh, our Asian project in uh, in Southeast Asia, and uh, we will have quite a few activities over, over there. Thank you, Sita. Now, uh, now our management team, together with me, those uh, uh, three ladies, and you see gender equality. We should count here. Doesn't work in Diplo. In management team, I'm I'm in in minority, and uh, this shows that Diplo works well. And I would like to, to, to invite uh, Hannah, uh, Stefan, Teresa to join us on the... You know about... Uh, <laughs> Hannah, uh, Hannah has been uh, uh, with Diplo for a long time, the brain together with uh, Dan of our uh, information system. Where is Dan? Dan, Dan, Dan. Hey, come on. <laughs> Teresa, person, please, who makes sure that everything is in Diplo works on time, that everything is uh, the complex uh, management of the system functions well. Uh, and uh, Steph, big star of this conference, our digital watch project and many activities. 
Big thanks to three of them for making it uh, possible, especially for staff efforts for organizing this great conference. Thank you. And one big applause for all of you for all you did over the last two days and coffee is waiting. Bravo. Yeah. Buses for the reception uh, this evening, 10 past 6 sharp, but not at the Cat Village as today, but at the roundabout. So if you get out of Cavalieri, turn left and then right, upright at the Cat Village, there is a roundabout. 10 past 6, the bus is leaving from there. Uh, cookies that you've got are eatable, uh, edible, edible. <laughs>